Well, the oceans, you know, all the cliches which we know about, um, they cover most of the Earth, and they're the least known part of the Earth, um, and, uh, and, and the most recently discovered part of the Earth. I mean, when I was uh, in my teens, uh, I had never... Uh, I mean, I'd sw I swam, yes, but I'd never seen what life was like under the ocean waves. Uh, and it, it wasn't until the 50s that I, I first got put on Aqualung. But when you do, you realise that here is the, the, the richest, the most diverse, the most beautiful, the most exciting, the least known of all the Earth's ecosystems. Um, and, I mean, I'm not a particularly good swimmer. Uh, I mean, I swim underwater, but, 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 and, and I did a bit of it in the 50s. Um, but, of course, in the last even 10 years, we suddenly acquired a, a craft that can take you down and keep you down, take you down if you're necessary for 10 hours at a time, just watching what goes on. And what you see, of course, is breathtaking. And so that's new stuff that you can uh, put on television. Plastics are of crucial importance. There are, I mean, and, and they are, it's, it's heartbreaking, of course. Which example do you choose as being most heartbreaking? The one I would choose, uh, I suppose, is because I feel so strongly for them, uh, are the albatross. And we've got sequence of the albatross. I mean, the albatross are such marvellous birds, you know. Um, they form partnerships for 50 years. They circle the, 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 the Antarctica collecting food. They come back to their mates at the same place, but they also feed their young. Uh, and there's a shot of, of the young being fed. Uh, and what comes out of the mouth of the beak of the adult? Not sand eels, not fish, not squid, which is what they mostly eat on. Plastic. And it's, 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 it's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Uh, the programme I've been writing all last night, and, and I've just come down from speaking, from writing now, is uh, the last programme in the series, and it is precisely about the changes that have taken place. Um, and, of course, you, you have to use historical perspectives if you're going to talk about changes. Uh, and the changes that have taken place, some are, some are, well, some are uh, more productive and some are less productive. And at the moment, I've just been looking um, at uh, footage uh, of uh, orcas um, and humpback whales collecting herring from the coast of Norway. Now, orcas weren't there 20 years ago. Um, and why? I, I, can't, I, I can't tell you responsibly, but they weren't. So if you ask me what changes I've seen, here we've got changes, orca, herding uh, herring, billions of herring, a scene of great fecundity, really. But it's a scene of change. And, and part of that change is due to the world, uh, global warming, there's no question about that. On the other hand, earlier in the program, uh, we are showing uh, corals, a coral reef, where that warming of the oceans has actually caused uh, a bleaching of the, of the, of the, of the reef and great loss of life. So it's a complicated balance, and you can't produce an answer. I mean, my worry is you can't produce a proper answer in an hour on television, uh, let alone in a conversation. I don't know. I mean, I've seen it on the reef, which I... I uh, again, you've got to get... A time scale, if you're talking about change, you've got to know somewhere intimately over a period of change and see what, what the changes are. And um, I'm too much of a, a flippity gibbet. I mean, I go from here to there and I don't go to the same place every time. I can, I can um, find places. See, what, one of the problems is that if you say, I was in South Georgia there 10 years ago, and 10 years ago, the glacier was flowing into the sea. And look where it is up now. But equally, if, if you want to be one of these died-in-the-wall disbelievers, 
he will say, well, I can take you to a place, actually, on the, in Antarctica, where I can show you that the ice has increased, which is true. So you can't, it, it's very, I mean, it's a true fact that there are such places. So it's, it's very dangerous just to say, point a finger at that point on the map and say, there you are, that's what's happening. You have to be a generalist and you have to take a, a survey. That's what science is about. Yes, of course I do. Uh, what a uh, responsible person could deny that? Uh, and not just my grandchildren, who are adults, um, a long way. But, um, but just more general than that, it isn't my lineage. Um, it, it, it's what is happening to the world. And coming to that, it's what's happening to elephants and what's happening to walruses, which I've been looking at all morning. You can only do global things with global agreement. Um, and, um, and to do that, you have to work, by and large, with politicians or through politicians. Uh, and it's up to us all in a democratic society to do what we can to persuade our politicians to do something about the, the dangers which we see. And that's why Paris was, was such um, a... a, a an optimistic and happy occasion, really. I mean, uh, it, looking back on it now, you think, poor mugs that you were. But we went out of those that meeting after that fortnight or so with a spring in our stride. You know, we've moved something. Well, I mean, it's a free world, um, and uh, we aren't thought dictators. Uh, and um, and all we have to do is to go along declaring the facts as we see the facts, um, and producing evidence whenever we can, and and doing it. The trouble is uh, that there are a lot of vested interests, and a lot of um, uh, people who it suits economically uh, to deny it, um, and. Um, you know, you can only got to see that's what happened in, in, in the smoking debates in the, in the 50s, you know. Um, there were people who were denied. Maybe they were being charitable. Maybe they were deluding themselves. Maybe they really thought that this statistical evidence linking lung cancer with, with nicotine was um, incorrect because you've got all your money in it, in, in the tobacco factory. I think there were evil men. I, I, I certainly think that. I, I, I think there were people who really knew and who um, denied it. But there were quite a lot who didn't. And I think there are probably plenty now who, who actually think, well, it's not really true about um, carbon dioxide. But... Um, Goodness knows. I mean, all we can do is to go, and all anybody can do is to go on stacking up the evidence from every quarter. We've had quite enough of experts. Um, that is a cry from somebody who doesn't understand what they're saying. That's what that means. Uh, if they say you have to have that, that's when they, someone has told them something which they don't like. Uh, and which they probably don't understand. Um, and that is not, uh, not evil, necessarily. I mean, I, there's quite a lot I don't understand, and there are quite a lot of people I don't like <laughs> in those terms anyway. Um, and so, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a, a knee-jerk kind of thing, but it doesn't bear examination for a microsecond. I would want to know on what basis we were talking and, and why it was that he wished to see me. Um, it's difficult to know what evidence he, he is going to accept. Um, and and the, the things that are happening right now, I was speculating. I mean, has there been, I don't know. Has there been a responsible climate scientist 
who said that the appalling things that are happening in Texas at the moment are a consequence of earth warming. I mean, I, I'm not a physicist and I'm not an e uh, and certainly don't know anything about uh, higher atmospheric chemistries and so on. But I do know my, that if you, if you want to cook something, uh, 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 if you want an action to proceed faster, whether it's in the chemistry lab or in the kitchen, you increase the heat. And if you increase the heat, you are going to get stronger reactions. And if you put on a kettle and increase it, the water begins to boil. Now, there will, I'm sure that there will be more sophisticated climatologists than me who will say, it's not as simple as that, dear boy. But nonetheless, I mean, what is happening to the world's climate right now at this moment? And then when you think about the piffling costs of, <laughs> of moving into uh, renewables, compared with what the huge cost that's been inflicted by this hurricane in Texas, you, may, you do wonder when scientists, when politicians are going to actually make that sort of comparison. One of the great worries, of course, um, is, that, is the time scale. Um, wh who is the politician who is going to take the action now, which will cost the economy a fair amount, but which won't bring any visible profit until long after he, the next election or the next one election? Who is that politician? Well, he, has to be a far, he or she has to be a far-sighted one for a start. And, and an altruistic one, for a start. Uh, and it, there are plenty of other problems well, that to uh, devote their mind to. Let's deal with this, because this is the initial problem. But longer-term problems uh, require uh, a, a, a more altruistic and far-sighted vision than daily politics can allow. The rise of nationalism is, is deeply alarming um, and uh, at a time when we are trying, and after all, the whole of, of the optimism about Paris was that here for the first time nations were getting together and to do something, and that is internationalism. So anything that interferes with that is... Uh, against what I think, what I wish would be happening. We need more internationalism, not less. And more talking, and not less. And more agreements, not less. And less frontiers. I'm not an economist, and, and I, I, I certainly don't understand the political and economic implications of Brexit. But philosophically, I would rather the people embrace one another than spat in one another's face. The, the, the decision to call a, a referendum for a Brexit was um, an abrogation of the principles of parliamentary democracy, in my view, because we didn't know the facts. We weren't presented the facts. I still don't know the facts, really. All I know is, compared to when the referendum came, I, I, I realise it's much more complicated than I thought. And, and when you go back and look and hear people saying, uh, well, what I said is we're going to leave and we're not going to pay any money, uh, you know, and that is um, a, a, a gross oversimplification of what the problems are. Why am I going on about this? I'm not a political chap. I know about <laughs> bugs. I've spent... 40 years, no, I haven't spent 20, 30 years wringing my hands and saying disaster, disaster, and so on. Um, and, and falling on deaf ears for a long time. And what I said in Edinburgh was, um, for the first time, I'm beginning to feel that actually there is a groundswell, that there is a change in the public view. I feel many more people are more concerned and more aware of what the problems are than there were. Uh, and of course it's a cliché, but it is true. Young people, who, they're the people who've got 50 years of their life ahead of them, 
Um, they are thinking they ought to be doing something about this. That's a huge change. And, and, I, and then I said, I remember not being a political sort of person, suddenly being amazed when the Berlin Wall fell. I, and I had no incl inclination that, 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 that somehow there was this great change of political mood in, 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 in people, not politicians, people that it was going to bring this overturning of, 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 of a world system, political system. And yet it suddenly happened. And I'm just sort of praying that that, that sort of thing might be happening at, right now. I would like to think it's because we, the facts are there and any rational person would think that. Um, maybe it's because when you're young, you don't have all kind of other trammels and other complications, uh, economic complications or whatever, or political complications, and that you can see the facts fairly clearly. And you might say, I mean, that's another word of being naive, but maybe they are naive. Um, but naivete is, um, is, has its qualities. Yes, I make all kinds of documentaries. The documentaries I like making uh, are the documentaries that explain why ants have their sort of society that they have, why birds of paradise have the sort of plumes they have. Those are the things that fascinate me. The wonder, the glory, the astonishments, the thing in the natural world. That's what I'd like to spend my time making programs about. And that's what I do. And that's what I started about. Uh, but I have the ob obligation, if I'm concerned about that, also to make programs about what we've just been talking about. But if you made those exclusively about disaster and doom and terror and so on, People, uh, well, I think both people would turn off, but, but also people um, would lose sight of what we're talking about. Uh, and what we're talking about is, is the splendor of this wonderful world. And if you, if you don't see that or don't have any care for it, or don't have any care whether there's a bird of paradise or whether there isn't, then you aren't going to do anything about it. Collective action. Uh, is, is one of the reasons why I'm feeling hope. Because, uh, you know, 30 years ago, um, people concerned about atmospheric pollution or whatever uh, were voices crying in the wilderness. And we aren't voices crying in the wilderness now. I mean, there are big institutions that are moving that way. And, uh, and, and, and uh, there's a widespread... I, I see a widespread change a more, a greater awareness than there has been 50 years ago. Sir? Yes, um, and um, there, there's no one, I mean, the, the, one of the great things about, about this power generation is the multi, it's all around us, it, all different ways of, 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 utilize, of tapping it. I mean, you take it from the wind, and you can take it from the ocean currents, uh, all sorts of places. And, uh, and so we should. Um, and and I, I would be naive to a degree if I, if I was supposed that there are no ill effects, that it's just a wonderful panacea with no problems at all. Of course. But, but of course, what are the alternatives? Nuclear power or blackout? Or, I mean, what are the alternatives you're going to have? People like you will be saying to me, I know, in another week's time, you know, so what's new? Now, what's new about this? And what are we going to write about it? And, um, you know, and I'm going to have to say, oh, it's full of wonderful new material. We've got new techniques and new technologies, and we're going to places we've never been before, which is to an extent true, but that's not what it's about. What it's about is, is that the, the life underwater is amazing. And, uh, and I've, seen, uh, I've seen humpback whales and bubble netting on film lots and lots of times. I've even seen quite a lot of coral personally. <laughs> but I still quite enjoy it. <laughs>